English Literature Paper 2 is Modern Text and Poetry. And this is a slightly longer paper, it's 2 hours and 15 minutes as there are three sections to the paper. In the first section, you'll be expected to write an essay about your chosen text, which is modern prose or drama. So for example, if you are studying and in spectacles, like so many of us are, you get a choice of two questions. So for example, with this one, it's either how does Priestley present some of the differences between the older and younger generations in an inspectacles, or what do you think is the importance of the ending of an inspectacles? And then you, you have two bullet points there to help you to um, trigger some of your ideas. So they're both worth 30 marks, and the idea is that you pick one reasonably quickly. Usually um, they are asking you about a character or a theme, um, and then the idea is that you gather all your thoughts together so you don't just start writing, make sure you do plan it. So you can plan it in any way that you want and however you feel most comfortable. For example, it might be an idea to um, complete a spider diagram with a focus in the middle. So for example, if it's a younger and older generation that you've chosen to do, then you would fill up your spider diagram with ideas. And then once you've written your initial thoughts, you can then decide how your argument or how your essay is going to unfold. So for example, if you're going to be talking about um, a certain character or characters, you might like to talk about the different traits that they have um, in a particular order. So for example, you might then organise um, this point, this point and this point into your paragraph one. And then this point could be your paragraph two. And so you'd find that you're, organize, you're organizing your ideas there. Um, a different way to do it would be to jot down five different ideas, five different plot points, well, not plot points, uh, uh, points of your essay. Um, so five different things you're going to say. So you could have... Um, five different quotes that you're going to use which might back up your argument. Usually um, you would be looking to write again between two to three sides of A4, um, certainly not less than a side and a half. Um, we go with a five paragraph plan because it's a very healthy length answer. Um, however, if you're somebody that writes an awful lot for a quote, then this might not be possible. That's, again, absolutely fine, similar to um, in paper one. Um, so make sure that you have your quotes, you have your evidence, um, and you have a plan. And then you can, you can do a brief introduction, but make sure that you get into the body of your essay as soon as possible. Your introduction and your conclusion, we often find, um, don't draw the most marks, but they do... Um, they do set out the, the, the focus or the, um, the strength of your essay. They set it out as to what direction it's going to go in. So perhaps a very, very short introduction and then start, away, start straight away analysing your quotes and unpicking them. Again, really important to choose quotes that are going to offer you that variety of alternative interpretations that you can unpick um, in depth and, and link to context. Um, and theme. Once you're ready to go into section B, Power and Conflict, these are the poems that you have been studying from the anthology. Um, before you get to the actual question, what is really helpful is that there are a list of the poems that you have studied here. And so if you're struggling to find um, an easy connection or comparison between the poem that you're given and, um, and the ones that you have to do from memory, it's worth looking down the list um, and deciding from there. So, you are then given a comparison question, as I'm sure you know, where you're given a particular poem, in this case Storm on the Island, and then you are given a focus, um, so in this case the power of the natural world, and you are then expected to find um, quotes and ideas from another poem of your choice from that anthology. So it's a really, really simple question once you know the method and or ha, you know once you know how to answer it and how to plan your answer. So when you um, decide what poem you're going to pick, 
that's when it becomes easier. So your method for this question should be, number one, you should obviously read the question as before and identify the focus. So like I said, in this case, it's the power of the natural world. The next thing you need to do is to choose your second poem. So, for example, with this one, the most obvious one would be the prelude. Not that you would have to do that one. There is never a right or wrong um, answer in terms of the comparison. So, for example, if you were given, um, compare the ways in which um, poets present place in um, an obvious question about place, for, like London, you don't have to pick a physical place. You could pick a place that someone is existing in their minds, so like in poppies or in remains. So you can interpret the question however you like. The important thing, like in the other questions, is your analysis and in your comparison as well with this question. So you need to choose your second poem. Once you've chosen your second poem, you need to come up with three statements across both poems as three statements so similarities and or differences between, between them. So, for example, with um, Storm on the Island and the Prelude, I've come up with three statements here, um, which I think I could argue or I could um, explain. So, number one, both of the poems show nature as dominant, uh, which means like controlling and powerful. Both show humans as weak, especially you know in comparison to um, the natural world, and they both use imagery to emphasise their power. So two statements about their ideas and one which is a technique. Imagery is a great one because it you have imagery in every poem and therefore you can always use that one um, as a way in and to ensure that you cover um, the methods and techniques bullet point and the mark scheme. So there, there we've got three, three statements and that's probably all I'm going to have time to write about in my answer. So for each of those statements I'm going to have to show the difference between the two poems. So I'm going to be looking for a quote which backs what I'm saying up from each poem. So overall, you'll find that you have six quotes, and actually six quotes by, might be too much. If you're someone that writes a lot, you may only get through two of these sections. I mean, obviously they're paragraphs, but they might be much larger than that because this, you know, you might, your analysis might be so, so vast that actually one of these um, statements, one of these arguments might take up a page, which is absolutely fine. So, for example, it says both show nature as dominant. So then, what I know now I need to do now then, is I need to find something in Storm on the Island that shows nature as dominant, which is really, really easy, because most of it is about that. So, um, making sure that you choose something juicy that you can exp explain. Okay, so that there is um, going to go with this statement. Uh, spits like a tame cat turned savage and it's perfect because it's imagery but it's also simile so I can I can talk about um, the fact that it's a simile, I can talk about um, the effect of referring to the storm as, as being a cat that's turned savage, like the word savage, the idea of it spitting um, and go into lots of detail. So then I would need to think in my, in, in my head uh, or from my bank of quotes that I have learned, something that shows nature as dominant from my from my other poems. So if it's the prelude, um, then you'd be thinking to pick a quote from there and jot it down. Then we've got the same for both show humans as weak. In this one here, um, we have uh, we just sit tight while wind dives and strays invisibly, and so that would go with that statement. And then another one which shows humans as weak in the prelude, something to show that he's panicking or he's, he's fearful um, of what he can see. And then both use imagery to emphasise their power. I can choose anything from there. So I'm going to go with leaves and branches can raise a tragic chorus in a, in a gale. And then 
obviously the last one would be my third quote from the prelude. So you find that you have six quotes prepared, three from this poem, Storm, the one that's in front of you, and three from the other poem. And like I say, it might be that you only get through two from each. That would be perfect, really, if you have two really, really, really chunky paragraphs that are comparing um, both ideas. Um, that's absolutely fine. But if you are someone that don't write quite as much, it's good to have the backup. So I'd say plan for it and then just see how far you get. So once you've then planned and prepared, your next thing would be to, so you've got three statements and differences, find evidence from both poems, and finally write about them. So if you want to revise at home, a good way of revising would be to, um, to come up with either your own question which has a particular focus with a particular poem and come and try to produce these statements um, in a plan. So come up with a plan you know, rather than actually just writing it, just plan it. Um, or ask your teacher to um, email you um, copies of exam papers that you can have a go at that you've never seen before. Um, similarly, you can get them from um, the AQA website. Okay, so just worth saying before we move on that it's interesting that aside from the four marks of SPAG, spelling, punctuation and, and grammar, um, that you get in um, paper one, the rest of the, the um, the mark schemes for paper one and paper two sections A and B. So you were talking about um, your poetry comparisons that you the, the scene poetry from the anthology, um, your inspector calls, your um, curious incident, your uh, Shakespeare and your um, Sherlock. The mark scheme is exactly the same for those questions. So you are doing the same sort of things. We're still looking for you to unpick. We're still asking you to identify a method and explain how that method is effective. And the more you can do that, the better. You know, we're looking for quality and not quantity when it comes to your, uh, your quote analysis. Section C, our last section for literature, is often the area that our students find the most disturbing because it's something they've never seen before and they find that the poetry often um, makes them feel quite anxious. But I'm going to try to explain to you today why it shouldn't because actually it's quite straightforward. So section C, the unseen poetry, you're always given a poem that you've, you've probably never seen before. We certainly won't have covered it through the anthology. And you have two sections for the unseen. You have section A, or 27.1, which is where you're, you're asked a question, and um, it obviously relates to the poem, it gives you a focus, and then it asks you to um, explore some of the ideas in the poem. And then section B, or 27.2, provides you with another poem that you've never seen before and asks you to compare it to the, to the, the first poem that you've never seen before. So they're with different marks, and that's really important um, to point out because that means that you have to spend different amounts of time looking at them. So for the first, the first part of the question, it'll ask you to, um, to look at a particular focus. So in this question, it asks you how the poet presents ideas about the way we live and work in the modern world. So the first thing you need to do then is, again, read the question. And I do think it is very important to read the question before you start to read the poem because then you're, it starts your thought process um, and how, how you might go about answering or which quotes you might choose. So read the question first, then read the poem. And I always say, don't panic the first time you read a poem. Because most people, even as English specialists, find that we don't understand the poem fully until we've you know, really delved into it or you know, looked at it further. So don't panic. It's like, poems are often like puzzles where you have to, you have to um, really, not guess, but you have to look at their meaning and, and decipher what you think they might mean based on what, what sort of images they use. So read the question, read the poem, and then read a poem again but this time 
try to underline anything you understand or feel you could explain. So for example, there might be lines in the poem that you really don't understand at all. And that's fine, you just make sure you don't go anywhere near those, those lines. We're looking for you in this question to analyse three quotes. Two, if again you're somebody that writes loads, but three is, you know, three is the sort of ideal number. And because it's worth 24 marks, uh, we'd be looking for you to write about a side and a half. Um, so you need to pick three things from here that you think that you could unpick in detail. So I've said here that and a lot. Read the poem again and underline anything you understand could explain or if any annotations that you think would help you to, to um, understand the poem in a bit more detail. Um, so the sort of natural things that you would do when you do see a poem for the first time. And then, once you've done that, you've got to try and understand the overall message. So try and think about what the overall message of the poem is. And it's usually linked to the question, which gives you will give you a bit of a, of a clue. So, for example, this question is asking you about the way we live and work in the modern world. And then, because of that, we realise when we read it that it's quite negative about the modern world. Um, and it's sort of instructing us about how we should behave um, in a way where we should resist some of, the, some of the features of the modern world. So think about the overall message, then what you need to do is pick the three, th three quotes that you feel that you can understand in detail. And even some students that really struggle with this, there are lines in there that you will understand. So for example in this poem here it says, let phones unanswered ring themselves to sleep. So I think everybody could maybe um, you know, um, have a go at trying to uh, and, and explain what that means. Uh, so let phones and answer themselves to sleep, I've got breathe at the end. So any three things that you think you could explain. If possible, try to um, take them from, from both stanzas or from um, several of the stanzas if there's more than more than two, rather than taking them all from the same stanza. But again, it's not it's not essential. Okay, so think about the overall message, then decide on your final three. And then it's just as simple as writing about them. And when I say writing about them, I mean pu pulling them apart and picking them in a way that you would do any other part of the literature paper. So any other, any other quotes that you've used. So really, really explain the things it possibly could su suggest. Be tentative. It could suggest this. It could also um, infer that. Right, so really, really um, think about the quotes that you've, you've chosen. You identify them as a technique if they are one. For example, in this, in this um, poem right at the end is a very short sentence. Um, which is also a command which says breathe. So those two things I would make sure that I, you know, I analyse or come up with reason as to why it's a short sentence at the end, why is it an instruction, how does it kind of overall um, explore, it, it kind of sums up the overall ideas in just one word and so I'd be talking about that. Um, so really, really explain and explore as much as you can. For the last question, the comparison question, it's only worth eight marks, and so you really only want to be writing a chunky paragraph. With this question, which is different to the other questions in the, both of the papers, the only thing it's really interested in is your comparison skills. So the mark scheme is just looking at how thoroughly you compare. So the first thing you want to do for this question then, in the same way to the previous, Question, you want to read the poem to um, annotate for any initial ideas. And then, what you need to do is come up with um, some ways in which they're similar and the ways in which they're different. So in this question it asks you um, how what, well, it says, what are the similarities and all the differences between the way the, po the way the poets present these ideas? So, in this case, I've come up with one similarity and one difference. 
um, be quite um, quick about trying to identify what techniques they use. I'd always um, do it through techniques rather than ideas because it's asking you about, for example, in this one, differences between, the differences between the ways the poets present these ideas. And so picking techniques um, is much easier because all, there'll always be techniques that are used by the, by the poets. So I've said that they both use imagery. Like I said, imagery is used always. So that's quite a, quite a safe one to use. And then one difference is one uses metaphors and the other uses repetition. So then all you need to do is write a, a ra around three quarters of a page, I would say. No, if you've got very small handwriting, half a page. If you've got quite big, chunky handwriting, maybe three quarters, but no more. It's very, very important that this question is treated as an eight mark question. So the one you've just completed, based on the first poem that you've never seen, is 24 marks. So that needs to be much greater. So if you only get time to do one paragraph, and it's not that long, it's not the end of the world. Because the mark scheme is very, very... Um, facilitating and it allows you to climb up the mark screen very very easily so you need to be then obviously choosing the quotes that match these um, I match these techniques and then straight away start writing about it these are the sort of um, like this is the sort of language you want to be using so I'm looking for things like whereas in comparison to compare however and like despite similarly on the other hand so using those words as much as you can Compare the two poems. So for me, it's always going to be through techniques.